She really meant the world to me and my family. And she always made the effort to be in our lives, whether it be through dinners or dance recitals or just coming over, whatever. And she means so much to me and I love her for the rest of my life. She means the world to us. You know, when I was in college, I started getting some pretty bad facial hair on my face. And right back then, laser hair removal became the big thing. And so I went for a consultation and they said, yes, we can help you, but it's gonna be six sessions for $1,500. And I was like, oh my gosh, I was in college. I couldn't afford it. And my parents were paying for all my monthly expenses, like my rent and my food. So when I called my mom, I was like, mom, I have to have laser hair removal for 1500. She's like, I'm already paying thousands of dollars for your rent and your food. Absolutely not. We do not have money for laser hair removal. So I called Nan and I started crying and I was like, Nan, I'm so upset. I have this facial hair. And she was like, how much does it cost? And I said, 1500. She's like, I'll pay for it. You have to have that. It's not good for your self-esteem. We have to get that done immediately. And in a blink of an eye, she did that. And I'll never forget that she would just go shopping in her 90s. Like literally, we would be exhausted. We'd be like, man, no more. And she would just say, you know what? We haven't found the perfect dress for you yet. And she would, when I tell you that she would literally go to at least 15 stores and we would try on almost 100 dresses just so that we could find the perfect dress that I was happy in with that I didn't make me feel fat and it made me look pretty. And she was just like, the patience I've never ever in my life seen anyone with the patience of her and I remember it was like a 45 minute wait one time at a restaurant and I was getting really impatient and I remember her saying you know I just want you to enjoy the time that we're with each other like we all are healthy we are not worried and we don't need to get upset and it's just like, she just was so, so patient. She's like, we're healthy, we're here, we're having a wonderful time enjoying each other. Let's just enjoy it. When I think about Shirley, something that always comes to my mind is that she was always pushing forward. And what I mean by that was when Harold left the earth and she became an accountant and she wanted to use the numbers and she wanted to use her mind. And then she started playing cards and that was the numbers. And she was always just pushing forward so I remember Shirley being a wonderful, wonderful, loving person. And she was always upbeat. I don't know if she ever was down. I'm sure she was in her private time a little bit. But I remember when they redid the dining room and it was gorgeous. It was purple with a rug and tile floor and really, really pretty. And she loved the house and she loved being out. She loved travel and she really, really liked life. Shirley was really about the most calm, nicest lady I ever met. And of course, I've been meeting her ever since I was born during the Second World War. First, we lived in Brooklyn. I think they may have also. And then we they moved to Great Neck. We moved to Rockville Center. And uh, we lived our Christmases and looked forward to our Christmas at Shirley and Hal's. And uh, even though we're Jewish and they were Jewish, Christmas was part of our life. And we're secular Jews, as uh, many of you are. Uh, I'm really glad that we can share this memory. I have seen Shirley in recent times. So uh, I wish you condolences for our loss. And we've lost a starling, a star. Uh, my grandma as well, and having lost her, and I have you know some memories from being very young, but one thing with Shirley was I never felt like I didn't have that, you know, she was always there for me and for us and like, I think, I don't know if that's something that comes down to just like who we are as a family. I think some of it has to do with who we are as like a faith and like with Jewish people, the Monesses are not the most secular bunch, but every Jewish holiday that I have that we celebrate still, I always relate that to her because those were the times when she was there for us and she was there to play that role and like let us know who we were as our family. And Shirley was an unbelievable person and we all appreciated her and we celebrated every occasion we could with her. Thank you and you're a lovely family. The day she announced to her parents that she was getting married, they said, okay, we'll set this up. And in their apartment building was the wedding. And all of the people who lived in the apartment building were invited to come to this wedding. But as the good communists that they were, everyone had to bring something. So someone brought the veil and someone brought a dress and someone brought food and somebody brought flowers and that everyone contributed something to the wedding. You know, she loved it. She didn't, she felt that that was just a wonderful way to celebrate her marriage is with her whole community and everyone chipping in to be a part of it. You know, when I was a kid, I used to go up to Great Neck 
very often and me and Laura were the same age and we played together all the time and Shirley was always so welcoming and made me feel so comfortable in their house and she was just a great kind of aunt that one would want to have and I'm really sorry she's gone. What I remember is how welcoming their home always was, very welcoming and beautifully decorated and you were always welcome for dinner. If you happened to be there at dinner time, you were always welcome to stay. And I do remember someone talking about watching TV in bed. My parents didn't have a TV in the bedroom, but I remember that Shirley used to always watch TV in bed, which to me was unusual. You know, one of my favorite moments we had, me, John, and uh, Shirley and Kyle, we all went out to a lunch at Pearl East. You guys had already mentioned that. And so you know, we went there and we're, eating duck, we had ordered duck, and I think she ate all of it. Me and John basically had to fight her for the Peking duck, and she ate most of that. Uh, we had, you know, obviously great conversation. There was something about Nan who was insanely patient as it related to shopping and making sure that you got just the right outfit that you felt good about. I remember, I don't know if you remember that store, Camp and Campus? Yes. We used to go there for back to school shopping, and my mom, Billy, was a little more in a rush, like, let's get things going, and Nan was always like, She's got to like it. She's got to feel good about it. Like, let her take her time. So that made me smile. 